Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today and I hope you're all doing really really well. As for me, I haven't exactly disappeared. Um, it's not like a magical disappearing act or anything like that. It's mostly just, yeah, school's been uh, kind of kicking my butt a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of work. Um, it's actually okay. I mean, I, I, I've been able to manage the workload. It's been pretty good in that sense, but it's still a lot. And of course, you know, it's kind of like middle of the semester right now. So all the tests and multiple tests and assignments we're all sort of due within you know a very close block of time so i haven't been around really to make a lot of content but hopefully i can get some things back up and going for the next little while before the next wave of assignments and tests hit uh you know overall i've been doing okay in terms of you know stay on top of school and trying to get in a little bit of a stream or you know a video when i can and tonight is one of those nights thank goodness because i just finished my uh uh test on pipes and valves and flanges and pumps and that yeah, was really entertaining and actually no that wasn't <laughs> that, was a, that was actually a pretty brutal test i'd be honest um yeah, that was probably the worst of the tests I've done, and hopefully, well, hopefully it'll get better. Um, there is definitely some, you know, you know, issues I guess with the uh, online learning and the way that the uh, uh, teacher has been structuring their class, and it's not really working all that well. So hopefully, there's you know some improvements that can be made there. But you know, we're having that dialogue and that conversation. So you know, hopefully. The next time I talk about pipes and, you know, whatever, uh, it'll be better. <laughs> Anyways, let's take a look at the uh, replay first. Uh, this is a loop. Uh, you know, he's a sort of a you know, channel regular, appears here and there in videos. And this time playing a GK. And I really like the GK play. Now, this is not one of those games where uh, loop goes out, you know, scores 350,000 damage and just like, you know, makes everything look really, e you know, really, really easy. Because, you know, those replays exist, but those replays oftentimes they don't teach you as much. This one, I think, is valuable because I think there's something uh, worthwhile to be taught when you watch this replay. So the first thing you want to do at the beginning of a game, right, and this is for all players, okay, take a quick look at the intelligence that, you know, the like that's been gathered, I guess, of the other team. What are they doing and what is happening on your end? So the first thing you should notice is that both the enemy team's destroyers, their Shima and their Holland, are on this side of the map. Now, this is a pretty significant advantage, right? This is a pretty significant advantage because generally it means that if the other side, let's say, does not have a destroyer countering it, if they have an advantage, it becomes a lot easier to push. The second thing you want to do, of course, is also to do a quick count of ships. So if you take a look at the map in terms of ships that are already here and ships that are heading this direction, you'll notice that there's quite a bit. There is both the destroyers, there is a Thunderer, a Conqueror, a Hindenburg, a GK, and a Montana. A grand total of seven of the enemy surface combatants are here. Plus their CV, because if you actually see it, their CV has been sending airplanes in this area as well. This makes it so that if you actually look on the far side of the map, the red team doesn't have much in terms of a holding force. So what this means is that with you know, Loop's team basically pushing hard the other side, it's up to Loop to really try to either hold this flank or stall this flank or to do something so that the other flank can push in uh, quickly while this flank is frustrated. And a ship like a GK can do this quite well. And I do want you to pay attention to the way he positions, the way he decides to play, and not only that, but also pay attention to some of the smaller, more minute details, which I'll point out as we keep going. All right, so first things first, you'll notice instead of running away, which is one of the mistakes that you definitely see from some BB players is they get a little scared and then they start bailing, you know, because they think that kiting away means you're sailing away at top speed. It doesn't. It actually means putting yourself in a good defensive type position, get yourself angled and basically be a very, very hard to crack nut that is going to be there. That is a threat that is going to do damage, but isn't going to die quickly. Right. And so you'll see loop play this role quite well and that ladies and gentlemen is actually a hilarious shot <laughs> remember that shima that loop was shooting at a little bit earlier on that same shima actually fell off the tech ran away ran close to the cur first and then loop caught up with a shell <laughs> that's just great anyways okay going back to loop's positioning all right this is key okay pay attention to this because this is really really important if you're playing a battleship you're on the defensive hold side, okay? Enemy team's ships are no joke. Take a look at what they have. There's a Thunderer, there's a Conqueror, there's a Hindenburg, there's a Montana. There's a lot of things here that can really mess you up. 
But watch the way that Loop is going to play. Nice little defensive position, kited away, angled. Not super close to certain things. The only thing he's really, really close to right now is that Conqueror. And that Conqueror decided to sort of come in a little bit too early. Doesn't really have the support, even though a bunch of his other ships are there. He's going to turn around, you know, eat a couple of secondary hits, you know, get set on fire, then eat a torpedo, get flooded. And while this is going on, even though the Conqueror is trying to kite away, it doesn't mean he's going to be immune to damage, right? Good Battleship players know that if you're angled away, I can still chunk you quite hard through things like your superstructure and, you know, just whatever other vulnerable thin armor pieces you've got, you can still get good damage. Anyways, there goes the Conqueror. Now take a look at the remaining ships on the enemy team. They haven't exactly gotten any closer. The Thunder is a little bit closer now at 15.3, but the Montana is still 20 kilometers away. Hindenburg is almost 20 kilometers away. So that Conqueror, for example, also sort of overcommitted a little too early, came out a little bit too early, didn't really have any real support. Which is fantastic, because as long as the GK can stay nice angled, you know, put himself in a defensive type, hiding away type position where it's not easy to kill him, enemy team can't really push in here. Even though the enemy team theoretically had more ships on the side in the early stages of this game. Alright, so this is really, really good. Everything's going well so far. Continues to hold. The numbers have started to even out a little bit, actually. If you take a look now, it's basically a... Uh, you know, actually, there's a slight advantage for green here. Uh, there is two Shimakaze sort of doing kind of Shima things. <laughs> I mean, that's what Shimas do, right? <laughs> like they just kind of play their own game sometimes. All right, anyways, two Shimas. Um, they're at least offering kind of a screen, which is good. Also, you'll notice that Loop is shooting the destroyers. And like, whenever there's a good shot on the DDs, off it goes. Whenever even there's like somewhat of a shot on the destroyers, off they go. It is really important if you're a battleship to shoot enemy destroyers. You take the destroyers out of the game. And the enemy team is going to struggle to hold flanks. See, one of the major, uh, I guess, roles of a destroyer, aside from like spotting and screening and all that, is also just to provide that torpedo threat. As long as the enemy team knows that you're there, but they don't spot you, there's always that worry that if they play the wrong way, they're going to get torpedoed. So, you know, whenever that destroyer pops up, Luke takes a shot. Now here, this is a really good move. You'll see Loop is slowly backing into that thunder. Why, you ask? Well... GK secondaries can hurt a Thunderer. Now, the Thunderer is behind a rock. Not very easy for the uh, Thunderer to shoot back. Loop stays angled to the Montana. Just backs up. You know, lets the secondary farm. And then, of course, whenever he's got another shot on another battleship, he's taking that as well. So this is a very experienced battleship player, right? Because, you know, you'll see that he's not really giving the enemy team much to work with, right? Um, the enemy team... I guess if they were to really try to focus him down, all three enemy ships right here, you know, all combined with HE, you know, they'd probably farm him down. But, you know, when they go do that, then the rest of his team is going to be able to hopefully uh, react to that as well, because you'll see that there is still a couple of other ships on this side. Okay, Thunder is, I believe the Thunder is trying to push out here, even though that first rear turret was just a meme. <laughs> that first rear turret was a meme. Okay. Anyways, Thunder comes out, does actually some pretty solid damage, gets two fires, immediately pop DCP. Okay, but the Thunder's position right here, it actually looks broadside, right? It actually looks kind of broadside. And a lot of people in that kind of a situation is actually going to be tempted to shoot at the waterline area. You know, try to go for the Citadel hits. But you'd actually find in a lot of situations when you try to go for that shot that you might not actually get it. The, if you actually look at the relative angle position, that main belt armor actually has some pretty decent angling to it. And so what you would want to do is, in this particular case, if you're playing a GK, A, let your secondaries farm, and B, shoot into that upper belt superstructure area. And you'll see Luke doing that. It just, you know, he hits the sort of a little bit higher than where you would expect. And he gets some pretty solid damage as well. That last level, not counting that one, that was a little bit of a... I mean, it's a GK. <laughs> Still does GK things every so often. Anyways, uh, whoa, that's a that's a bit of an odd citadel. Okay, weird ricochets can happen in the game, um, but able to uh, you know deal with that thunderer, turn his attention back onto the enemy Montana. Enemy Montana is within secondary range. Okay, perfect. Get the secondaries engaged. You know, get his uh, main guns engaged as well. Again, Montana is angled, so aim a little higher. Target that superstructure. Right? Battleship play is very deliberate play. Okay? It's every action you do as a battleship, you really have to think about it. Alright? Ask yourself, if I do X, Y, or Z, what purpose am I accomplishing? 
and you'll if you pay attention to the way Luke plays, you can almost see clearly every single time what the decision making process was. I'm going to hold this position because if I hold here, they're not going to push. If I hold here, I'm going to be within secondary range of things that come around this area. Oh, somebody's coming. All right, I'm going to back up. You can see that there's sort of very deliberate actions, right? Oh, now they're pushing. Okay, the Montana's coming in as well. Thunder's starting to push in. Okay, I'm going to start hiding away. Continue to let the secondaries farm. Use what turrets are available to hit things. All right, and that is what you want to be doing when you're playing a battleship. Now, remember, this engagement against the Montana is a very uneven engagement. The Montana started with A, a Hindenburg as assistance, and B, quite a substantial HP advantage like 51,000 HP, I think. Now, eventually, yes, the Montana does get Loop and takes down the GK, but by this point in time, Loop has killed three enemy ships, has held this flank off really, really well, and then take a look at what happened to the other side. Remember, enemy team overcommitted to this particular flank and never got anything out of it. And if you never get anything out of the flank where you're overwhelming in terms of numbers and superiority, you are going to lose the game. And this is exactly what is actually happening. The enemy team had this big advantage here and didn't do anything. And of course, by not doing anything, eventually they were able to get stalled out um, and then of course pushed in from the other flank. And then this is pretty much game. So anyhow, um, I hope you've picked up a little bit of something again. I mean, this is always the goal, right? Every time you guys watch a video, I hope you pick up a little bit of, uh, you know, a tip, a hint, some other things to think about, and hopefully your gameplay gets better because that is the long-term goal of this channel is to help those of you who still want to improve in the game to get better, even if it's one small thing at a time, okay? So the main takeaway from this video, I guess, you know, let's see if I'm going to summarize into like, let's say three things is one, uh, really analyze the enemy team, pay attention to the early intelligence gathered, okay? When you have the early intelligence, you can make some pretty solid judgments, right? Like in this case, hey, both enemy destroyers came to this side, fantastic. Other flank is going to have an advantage. And look, the other side has overwhelming numbers. Okay, so my job, instead of pushing and throwing my ship away, becomes let me get into a defensive kite, hold the position, and then make the enemy frustrated, right? And you'll see, like in this battle, Loop did that fantastically well. Second thing is, don't forget to count, okay? Always do counts. Count the enemy ships that are on the flank, and then decide what happens on your flank. If you see that there is like a 7 to 4, you know, advantage for the enemy team, you should be trying very hard to just stall and delay as much as you can, because it means that the enemy team on the other flank is going to be at a numerical disadvantage, and if your team does anything right, then, you know, with that numerical superiority, they push out and they hopefully win becomes a, you know, almost a who stalls better and then who pushes better kind of situation. But at least it's a pretty even chance. Now, still, there's going to be games where, you know, you do everything right and then your team throws away an advantage that does happen and there's not much you can do about it. That's sort of the nature of World of Warships randoms. And that's okay, as long as you're learning the reasons why you're doing the right thing and, you know, and you're giving your team the best possible chance to win, right? And I guess the final thing is be deliberate. Whenever you're doing something... In any ship, it doesn't have to be battleships, it could be any ship, it could be destroyer, it could be cruiser, whatever, always be deliberate. Know what the point of your action is going to be. It's actually one of the rather common things that I get when I talk to players who are like, let's say, who are not doing very good in the game right now, who are trying to improve, and they send me a replay and I'll look at the replay and I'll be like, okay, well, why did you do that? And they'll be like, oh, I don't know, you know, I just did it because it maybe felt right or whatever, you know, don't do that. Understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, because it'll help you analyze what you're doing right and wrong uh, in the game. As for Loop, uh, this game lasted, I think, just over 10 minutes for Loop before he got sunk by that Montana. 202,000 damage, you know, very, very solid GK game. Uh, sunk three enemy ships, top of the team in terms of base experience by quite a sizable margin. Uh, anytime you get over like 2,000 base experience, is pretty darn good. Um, as for the damage, you can see, yeah, you know, a pretty good balance between primary uh, AP damage, secondary, and fire damage. And of course, positive credits earned. Always a good thing. Anyways, I hope you've managed to pick up some extra little hints for your gameplay. Until next time, folks, take care of yourselves, be good, be well, and I'll talk to all of you again really, really soon.